I will introduce the uh, first speaker of today, and that is Dr. Alexandra, Alexandra Skreine. Uh, she completed her PhD in the Institute of Biochemistry and Biophysics at the Polish Academy of Sciences in 2016. Uh, there she studied histone mRNA 3 ferment formation in a collaborative project between the Douglas Lab in Poland and the Dominski Lab at the University of North Carolina. Uh, Alexandra then joined the laboratory of Robert McGinty at the University of North Carolina for her postdoctoral studies. Um, and again, for a collaborative project now between the McGinty Lab and Major Lab, both at UNC. Alexandra is supported by the prestigious postdoc fellowship from the American Cancer Society. Um, and today she will tell you about her exciting work um, on studying the nucleosome interactome. So Alexandra, please go ahead. Thank you very much for your introduction, Hanneke. Um, and before I start, I would like to thank the entire Fragile Nucleosome team for organizing this wonderful seminar series and giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm going to tell you a very exciting story about how I deciphered the nucleosome interactome. And everything that I'm going to present has just been published as a, nucleic, uh, as a breakthrough article in the Nucleic Acid Research Journal. Nucleosomes are fundamental repeating unions of chromatin. The, the structure supports DNA packaging, but also requires the effectors of genome templated processes to function on polymeric chromatin. This makes nucleosomes also serve as uh, active signal integration hubs for genome temp templated processes as DNA replication, DNA repair, or gene expression. These processes are often regulated through position-specific post-translational modifications to histones or DNA or through the incorporation of histone variants. In fact, myriad of molecular machineries bind to nucleosomes to alter the composition or to enact genome-templated processes. And in my project, I'm interested in understanding how these molecular machineries recognize the native nucleosome disk structure. In general, Nucleosomes present three major areas of interaction, histone tails, the highly contorted DNA, and the histone disk surface. While histone tails and their modifications have been extensively studied, especially using peptide uh, models, the universal principles of disk surface recognitions remained undiscovered. And in my talk, I'm going to focus on how proteins and protein complexes recognize the nucleosome disk surface. Here are presented five examples of proteins and protein complexes that bound with nucleosomes. And all of these proteins share two features in common. They all engage nucleosomes as one entity, recognizing uh, nucleosome as a whole rather than uh, individual histones or DNA, which is perhaps best visible if we look at the footprints that these uh, proteins make on the nucleosomes. The second feature is the engagement of the acidic patch. All of these protein interactions overlap within this acidic patch. And with growing numbers of uh, high resolution structures solved by cryogen, we see more and more examples of this acidic patch engagement. This encouraged us to answer, to ask three questions. Is the acidic patch a hotspot for inclusion binding? What other hotspots exist? And how many proteins re require specific nucleosome disk surfaces for recruitment? To answer these questions, we designed a comprehensive nucleosome interactome screen where we used nucleosomes bearing mutations on the nucleosome disk surface, incubated them with nuclear lysates, and used mass spectrometry to compare the proteomic profiles. Our nucleosome library consists of acidic patch neutralization mutants, where seven residues that are part of the acidic patch are mutated to a combination of alanine and serine residues and four other nucleosomes with adjacent patches mutated the same way to collectively disrupt entire nucleosome disk surface. These mutations are similar in degree, meaning that they affect similar number of atoms, charge groups, and hydrogen bond donors and acceptors. And this is very important because it allows us to compare comprehensively and qualitatively across the library. We reconstituted nucleosomes in the library with biotinylated DNA, immobilized them on streptavidin beads, and, in, and incubated with mouse embryonic stem cells nuclear lysates. Next, we eluded nucleosomes with bound proteins and ran them briefly on the denaturing gels. We excised proteins over the bulk of histones and streptavidin, 
and proceeded with in gel trips and digestion to generate peptides for mass spectrometry. We use tandem mass tag isobaric tags to specifically label peptides from each of the nucleosome pull down. TMT tags have the same nominal mass, however, they have different isotopic masses that are revealed after ion fragmentation. And this strategy allows for sample multiplexing as well as to compare directly nucleosome interactions across the library. Because there only exist 11 t unique TMT tags and we had 18 samples, we had to divide them between uh, three groups and label them separately and then run each of this uh, group separately on the mass spec. To be able to directly compare protein abundance between each of the nucleosome pull down, we included wild type triplicate in each of the injection. To analyze this data, first we compared the protein abundance between wild type and mutant nucleosomes and plotted these differences on the volcano plot. On this plot, each dot represents a single plot pro protein. Y X axis represents log difference, Y axis represents uh, significance of that difference. This is the 5% uh, false discovery rate threshold and uh, a vertical line indicates 1.4 fold change cutoff. And we conducted the same analysis for all the uh, mutant nucleosomes. In each top uh, quadrant, left quadrant, we can see proteins that were significantly decreased in the mutant nucleosomes as compared to the wild type nucleosomes. And just by looking at this plot, uh, two conclusions emerge. First is that acidic patch is truly a hotspot for nucleosome binding, uh, where over 50% of proteins specifically recognize this site. And the second conclusion is that two other patches um, also contribute to binding, as 18.8% of proteins are decreased in mutant nucleosome two and three. Remarkably, the other surfaces on the nucleosome do not contribute to nucleosome binding. To understand uh, how many proteins overlap between these three hotspots, we generated an uh, upset plot where we can see uh, unique proteins that are significantly decreased for each of the hotspots. We can see uh, unique proteins that are shared between the two hotspots and proteins that are shared between the three hotspots. Not surprisingly, uh, acidic patch has the most number of unique binders. However, what is interesting here is that 80% of proteins that recognize uh, patch two also recognize acidic patch, and 80% of proteins that recognize patch three also recognize patch two and acidic patch, indicating rather multi-patch dependence that is primarily driven by the acidic patch. After analyzing general trends, we wanted to look at individual proteins and uh, identify the binding profiles. On this heat map, you can see uh, each row indicates um, a single protein and each column indicates single uh, pull down. And color blue indicates uh, decreased binding and color red increased binding to mutant nucleosome as compared to the wild type nucleosome. From 650 proteins that we identified in the screen, we were able to establish binding profiles for 300 of them, with the majority being dependent on the acidic patch. When we look closer at this heat map, we can identify proteins, uh, components of large protein complexes that show the same uh, surface requirements as exemplified by anaphase promoting complex here or Y nuclear pore complex here. We can also see a lot of uh, proteins that represent chromatin processes like chromatin modification or remodeling. And with uh, the arrow here, I indicated proteins that are known acidic patch binders and serve very nicely as positive control embedded in our screen. To verify the surface requirements for selected hits, we uh, conducted pull down experiments and used Western blot as an orthogonal method. We were able to verify all the acidic patch and multi-patch dependence for all the tested proteins. And the example that I really like to show is the WDR76 protein that shows decreased uh, dependence on patch one, two, and three, 
And this is very nasty recapitulated on the Western blots one, two, and three here. Importantly, we also confirmed no patch dependence as exemplified by part one plotting. Altogether showing that our uh, screen results are repro reproducible even using the threat detection technique. Perhaps the most exciting uh, protein complex that we identified in our screen is anaphase promotion complex, also called cyclosome. This is an E3 ubiquitin ligase that targets cell cycle proteins for degradation by the uh, proteasome. We could see strong dependence on uh, acidic patch and the adjacent patch too, that was also confirmed by the Western blood. To verify if this interaction is direct, we used uh, recombinant uh, strep tag APC and immobilized it on streptactin resin and incubated with wild type and acidic patch neutralized mutant nucleosomes. These nucleosomes are fluorescently labeled to increase the sensitivity of the detection and wild type, but not acidic patch mutant a nucleosome bound to APC, showing acidic patch dependent and, of course, direct interaction. To further confirm this acidic patch dependence, we used lanopeptide, that is a known acidic patch binder, to compete nucleosomes from the APC. It is known that lana recognizes acidic patch uh, through the arginine anchor, and we use this lana and lana uh, mutant to come to as a competitor in the pull-down experiment. Not surprisingly, LANA wild type, but not LANA mutant, was able to remove nucleosomes from the APC, once again showing acidic patch dependence. And this is the only one example I have time to talk about today. And with that, I would like to uh, go to conclusions and show you our uh, uh, overview of the nucleosome interactive stream with over half of the proteins that were bound to nucleosomes were re recruited specifically by the acidic patch. And 8% 8, 8 of the proteins were also recruited by the, by the two adjacent patches. However, this recruitment was primarily uh, driven by the acidic patch. And I would also, I would also like to highlight uh, a handful of examples of uh, proteins that we identified to be acidic patch and multi-patch dependent. And these proteins represent uh, diverse nuclear processes such as epigenetic regulation, DNA repair, DNA replication, cell cycle control, transcription, RNA metabolism, nuclear transport, nuclear architecture, and more. It is clear that all these proteins have to be recruited to chromatin, to chromatin in spatial and temporal manner, and that can, that can be achieved through the recognition of specific binding sequences, uh, DNA sequences, or through recognition of epigenetic landscapes. And on the top of that, proteins with nucleosome targeted activities that already that once bound to the uh, to chromatin have to orient themselves to uh, perform their functions. And this is accomplished by the acidic patch. And although over a dozen high resolution structure of structures of nucleosome complexes suggested this possibility, our nucleosome screen really uh, showed the per pervasiveness of the acidic patch binding and the competition uh, that must occur and this competition often uh, defines the functional output, which is chromatin modification or nucleosome remodeling. With that, I would like to acknowledge my advisor, Robert McGinty, that, who guided and mentored me through the entire project. I would also like to acknowledge the entire McGinty lab and especially people who contributed to this work, Emily, Yuka, and uh, Angio. I would also like to thank our collaborators Ben, uh, Ben, Emily, Dan, and Dennis in Ben Major Lab, especially Dennis, who um, conducted all the mass spectrometry analyses. I would also like to thank uh, Nick Brown, who uh, provided APC uh, to our uh, studies, and also would like to thank our my funding sources, the Cancer Epigenetic Training Program that is run by Leinberger Comprehensive Cancer Center at, the, at UNC, and also American Cancer Society Postdoctoral Fellowship. And 
I guess I would just like to uh, verify, I mean, say that Ben Major actually moved to WashU and is no longer at UNC. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a great talk, Alexander. Um, I'll start off with a question that's already, there's, there's a few questions already in the Q&A box. So I'll start with one of those. Um, but if people want to raise their hand, that's still okay too. Uh, so first question is by Ben Weekly. And he asked, do post-translational modifications change the nucleosome conformation enough to change which residue in the acidic patch, which residues in the acidic patch are accessible for binding by these interacting proteins? So this is a very good question. And we know from other studies that, for instance, installation of ubiquitin on the nucleosome is going to affect binding to acidic patch. And I'd say that, um, modifications that are in the proximity of the acidic patch will definitely affect binding uh, to the nucleosome. With uh, tails uh, being modified, um, I don't really know the answer to that. Because this is not also what we, we, we focused on. Okay. Um, then Christine is also very eager to ask a question. So I think she can just unmute herself. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. That was a beautiful talk. I love seeing like high throughput screens like that with the acidic patch. I was curious, I was really excited that last slide where you showed the different um, groups of proteins that you found mm -hmm. interact with the acidic patch. I was excited because I saw a couple PATH1 complex members, which like mm -hmm. last year I actually showed all interact with the acidic patch using in vivo BPA cross-linking. So I was curious if you've done any more like experiments to um, look at that. Like if is it, have you done any like transcription inhibitors to see if you like lose acidic patch binding? No, okay. No, I haven't done that with well, this, uh, this complexes, but yes, there is half one and there are other uh, components uh, of Great. the transcription machinery. So it's, uh, yeah. Cool. I encourage people to study it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I have a question. There's or there's a question from Jason Fan, so I will now allow you to talk. You can accept that and go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, very nice talk. Um, so I was curious about the the, the half of the disk uh, disk surface that um, didn't show much changes. Um, it looks like it's like you know that's where like H three H four is. It's also close to like the uh, nucleosomal DNA like uh, like SHL two. So I was wondering, like, the reason you don't see much changes because, um, like, those proteins that bind there might depend more on, like, binding to, like, SHL2 or, like, the tails of maybe H3, H4. Like, do you think that that's, that make, makes sense? or? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I do think that that makes sense. I think that in that region, it might be modifications that drive tails, modifications that drive the interaction because definitely we know that there are proteins that, bind to H3 and H4, and those are very important interaction. And it was actually very surprising to us that we haven't seen anything there. But um, but yes, I agree that that this just might be driven by, by uh, tails and by specific uh, modifications. Great, thank you. I think there's time for one final question. Um, and I could kind of group together two from my Carrie and Maria Aris Um so they're saying, I was wondering if you think the interactome will differ when histone variants are present in the nucleosome. Is there a particular variant you think will have a large effect? Is this something you're looking into? Uh, I think that the general uh, conclusion that acidic patch is the most important surface would not change. However, we know that for instance, H2AZ has, a, has an expanded uh, acidic patch surface, and that could bring more, <laughs> even more interaction. So, um, so I do think it will change a little bit, but it wouldn't change the general conclusion. We could see different proteins probably. Okay, I think we'll have to leave it at that. There's a few more questions. If you want, you could also um, like go into the Q&A box and type out some answers. Um, Okay, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alexander.